Hello everybody and welcome to your next Allegro HD tutorial. So in this tutorial series we're going to be learning about something that has been long awaited in this tutorial series and that is going to be loading maps in our program. Now this is going to spend f about four to five tutorials. The reason being is that I'm going to start with the most basic way in how to load maps and then in each subsequent tutorials I'm going to be making it more advanced. And then after this we're going to be getting into screen scrolling which is a big topic and I think after that I'll just teach data files and that will be near the end of the tutorial series. There's been a lot more that I wanted to teach but I feel that if instead of teaching it basic like that I'll just teach it in the form of a game. So. I on my website www.codingmadeeasy.ca I have a poll going on on which tutorial series you want me to make next. So right now I believe it's the advanced platformer series that's winning right now. I don't know if it's tied with something else, but that's when I remember. And if you like, if I teach advanced tutorial series for the for the platformer game, then you'll learn a lot more from that. It'll be a bit more complicated than the other one, but you'll learn some more advanced topics about Allegro, etc., etc. So, anyways, I I just previously made a tutorial about this while I was coding it, but the tutorial took about 20 minutes, and I didn't want to split that up into two different videos. So, I already have the code done right here. So, I'll just I'll just explain what the code does and then you can hopefully you can grasp it. So let me just change this right here. Loading maps uh episode one or part one or whatever. And hopefully I'll remember to put this on my website. If not, then you guys can remind me if you guys have trouble with the code. So right now I'll save it there as I'm just gonna save this so then I remember to put it on my website after. So tutorial thirty one. Okay, so that is saved. So now let's get it into the code. So essentially what a lot of game programming companies do or anybody who's made two two D games mainly uses a 2D array to load the map. Now why do they do this? It is much easier. Some people might say why not just draw the map and say paint or something and whatever but it's essentially not the most flexible or the most effective way to go about it. I, I could show you guys how to load a map through paint and such and still add collision and such but I really wouldn't advise that because I would seem like a bad teacher if I was teaching you a wrong way of doing something. And you will figure out that this method I'm teaching you is much more effective, much better, much cleaner, etc, etc. So we can indeed create a 2D array right here and load the map from the 2D array that we create. We can simply do that if we so choose or so pleased to do so. But it's better to load your map or and or any game elements that can be loaded from external files is better to lo load them from external files. Why you may ask? The reason being is that it helps for program productivity and speed within your, within your program. In smaller programs you it might take like a second to say five seconds to compile your code and to display it and it might seem like the compile time doesn't really have uh, downside to your programming it doesn't slow down production time once you get into larger programs you the production time is key especially working for a sick game development program uh for a game development team or something and you have a deadline productivity is key those extra t uh, when on larger programs those extra 10 to 20 seconds or 20 to 30 seconds it could take to compile your program can really add up and make you lose valuable production time so to reduce that we load things from external files and when we load things externally we never have to recompile the code whenever we make a change to our program it just runs it because it loads it 
it executes the code during runtime. It does. It doesn't have to evaluate the code. It doesn't have to build it. it. Does not have to do anything. It just does it at runtime. So because of that. It's because it does things at runtime, then it actually speeds up our comp uh, speeds up our game, speeds up everything all together, and speeds up productivity. So that is how major game companies do it. That's how it has been done, and I'm gonna teach you how to do it. So this is the by far the easiest way to go about it. Well, if not the easiest, one of the easiest. So let us look into our code. So I'm I'm not a fan of global variables. I'm really not. But since we're not using classes or anything, I'm going to use, use an exception in this. So we have two global variables called map size x and map size y, and that's gonna basically essentially tell us how big our our map array is gonna be. Okay, simple enough. Now we have a define up here, which is going to define how wide, how much pixels wide, and how pixel, how many pixels long each block that's going to represent the screen is going to be. Now we're not loading textures in this tutorial. In the later, t in subsequent tutorials, I'm going to be teaching you how to load uh, textures and stuff through the through the file. So, but that's not for this tutorial. So now we're, we're just going to be drawing different rectangles on the screen and each number in your text file is going to represent a different block or different rectangle color. So right now each each block is going to be 40 pixels wide and 40 pixels long and we don't essentially know how large our map array is. So if we go to our text file, I have a file right here called map1.txt now at the top of our file I define how wide how wide our array is and how much, how long our array is. So if we look at this as a 2D array, it is 10 spaces wide and 10 spaces long. And this is essentially our whole map right here. So if since since our block is 40 pixels, this zero right here, the first zero right here is going to represent uh, say zero is gonna represent the sky, okay? So zero is gonna represent a blue block that's gonna be 40 pixels. So each of these zeros represents 40 pixels on the screen. So essentially, to find out how many pixels this map is gonna essentially take, is gonna be 10 times block the block size. So 10 times 40 equals 400. So therefore, this map is 400 pixels wide. And since it's 10 pixels long and the width of the blocks is 40 pixels, then our map is going to be 400 by 400. So that's simple enough. So the zeros are going to represent the sky, which is a blue blocks, and the one is going to represent the grass or the ground. Okay? So different numbers indicate different things within our map. So that's effective. That's effective way to do it. So say you have different textures. Say you're making a platform game, and the zeros represent the plat, or the zeros represent the sky, and the ones represent the ground. And say you have threes that represent the platform, or twos that represent the platform, and you have uh, threes that represent a door to the next level. You have the number five that represent coins or you have the letter C or something or something that represents coins and etc etc or you have something that represents a player the array can do so much different things so um but right now we're just going to be storing two different colors so you can get the basis of what it what it does so right now we're specifying the the map is going to be 10 by 10 and we have our map specified right here and you have to make sure that it is indeed 10 by 10 this is why this is the least effective way because if it is not exactly 10 by 10 it can it's not very dynamic it can't really adjust to what your code does in the final series or final video on loading maps you'll be able to lo learn how to dynamically load maps so even if you make a mistake it will draw whatever you have written in and then you could you, you you could do error checking in case if you want to do that if you really don't like the errors or so on and so forth. So 
and just to let you know what would happen say I put like an extra zero there it will only take in it will read from all the way till here and then it will start reading from here so if you essentially wanted to draw this last pixel here it wouldn't work because everything has to be uniform in the in the method we're doing it so that is our array right there so how are we actually gonna load in our array so we have a load map function right here that contains a file name the name of the map on the map file that we're going to be loading our map array I made the array a hundred by a hundred because we essentially don't know how big our map is going to be before we load it and since we're not doing using dynamic arrays then I just made the array bigger than what we'll actually have to use so we'll, we won't get an error based on space issues and then our bool done which is going to say that if we should close the game window or not and that is it. If the if the file is not open, then we're gonna just say that we can't locate the file, and then we're gonna close the window. Cause without the map file, we we don't have anything to show. So what we want to do is that we want to create two integers called load counter x and load counter y. So these are gonna represent which index in the array to store the values. So if you haven't learned about the file stream then I suggest that you learn about the file stream because this might be confusing to you. So we're going to use the if stream and to actually load in something from the file. I'm going to name it open file and we're opening the file name file name that we're going to specify up here. So we say if the file is open by using this function right here then first of all we want to get the, the size of the array. So we get the size of the array right here which is 10 pixels wide and 10 pixels long okay now if you guys have watched my uh, my first Lego series I made this way more complicated than it has to be just put this before the while loop and it makes more sense so we get the side the width of the array and the height of the map array after that we say that if the file name is not at the end of the file so EOF stands for end of file so if it is not at the end of the file, notice the exclamation mark, which means not. Then we say we get we use open file map load counter x load counter y. So we store the value into this index of the array. So each time that we actually get something, we have to increment the the load counters by one or by a certain value to load it into a different index within our map array. If we don't do this, if we don't in increment this, then therefore it will just overlap the the value that it had before. So first of all, it's going to store our first value into index zero zero, since load counter x is equal to zero and load counter y is equal to zero. So after that, we say load counter x plus plus. So basically, why I'm doing it like this? Some of you might say why. Don't, why don't I do load kind of Y plus plus or whatever the reason why I'm doing it this way because it makes it essentially it makes sense to do it this way and it essentially makes it easier and less confusing when you're drawing it after if you use if you were to do load kind of Y plus plus then it will draw your map sideways it will draw it it won't draw it the way you want it here it would draw it uh, it would draw it a different way it would draw it inverted so and waved and to, the way to avoid that is that the loading mecha mechanism mechanism sorry I've used is to make it essentially easier. So right now we are the the y is equal to zero and we're gonna we're incrementing x each time. So we're basically loading all the values in our x in our in horizontally. So once you read all these values, then we actually increment load counter y, letting us know that this is the second row or the second row that we're actually loading. So we load this row, and then it's letting us know that the when we increase load counter again, then we're, then we're loading in the third row, etc., etc. So make sure you increment the x value, and then we say that if load counter x is greater than or equal to map size x then we increment load counter y by one and then we reset load counter x equal to zero and then essentially if the file is not open for else we say that we cannot locate the file we put the percent s and then we put the file name 
letting us know the file name that we cannot open. And then we set done to true so it closes the window.